Hello everyone, this is Alan from MysteryMTG.com. I meant to film this in the store and I forgot my keys. So we're just gonna be doing a car to car chat. And if people like this, I'll keep doing it. But um, the negativity surrounding magic is ruining the game. I think a lot of people who work at Wizards are great people. They're very passionate. I think Wizards is a great company. I think a lot of the bad decisions that have been happening are more so related to shareholders and Hasbro. But I do think what I just saw on the Twitch stream in which the, I think it was the Magic Weekly and, and the guy responded to one of the comments by essentially saying, we hear your criticism, nothing is gonna change. What? what? All of this, your, your, your stock is sliding down and, and people are new players that are excited to jump into the game and they, they wanna start playing and they look at the comments of every video, they look at all, search up Magic the Gathering right now and the top six posts, top six videos on YouTube are all gonna be, Magic is dying. Hasbro is evil. Uh, uh, Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast is ruining Magic the Gathering. Other TCGs you can play, etc., etc. And as a newer player, who is going to be excited about playing the game when all you see is negativity? No one. Absolutely no one. It's ruining the game. We've had people come into the store and just say, I was thinking about buying this precon, I was thinking about buying this, but ultimately, with what's happening, I feel weird supporting the game. As a store owner whose whole living is off of this, that worries me in that regard. But beyond that, because like I said, I don't care about that. As a Magic player who wants the game to succeed and wants to continue to enjoy the game, and I play the game every day. That's the cool thing about owning an LGS. You get to always play the game and you get to play with the community and you get to know them uh, and you know their concerns. And it's just, it's getting to a point where it's spilling over. It's boiling hot. I've never seen it this bad. And I remember the VIP Double Masters controversy, or the Walking Dead controversy, the people sending death threats uh, to the command zone because they were so angry about Walking Dead and Secret Layers. And so I think the biggest issue here is just communication. Wizards, you know people are angry and you know it's hurting your game. Just communicate. <laughs> Don't do not do it in an MTG Weekly thing where you read a comment on a Twitch chat and say, essentially, this isn't going to affect anything, I'm sorry. We hear your concerns, it doesn't matter. No, oh my god. Anyone who runs a business, any multinational corporation should especially know when there is a huge controversy and it's actually affecting your share price and people are, are dropping the game, people are liquidating some of their singles, they're liquidating some of their sealed product, you have to know that you need to reassure people not remove the reprint policy from your website very oddly timed. I'm not gonna draw anything to that because I don't, I don't know what that is even about and I'm not gonna attempt to know that or act like I know that. But ultimately you just need to say, we hear your concerns and uh, we're going to acknowledge them because it's a, a lot of you and uh, we, we know that we've been releasing a lot of product and we're going to attempt to slow it down. We're gonna do what we can to slow this down. Now the game has become more popular, so maybe we should be releasing more product, but maybe we shouldn't be doing this many secret layers, this much supplementary product, and, and this many main sets, um, and then the universe is beyond stuff, because we feel the, the product dump and the wallet fatigue is becoming a real thing. We apologize for it, and we'll be better moving forward. If you do that, and you address the issues, and you're transparent about it, everyone, everyone in the community community will respect that right some people might still whine okay that doesn't matter you're acknowledging what's happening you're communicating with the fan base that that's all that people want right now it's just it's radio silence and uh i love the game i want the game to keep growing i think it's it's one of these things where i run a store and i have people that come into my store that that have nowhere else to go sometimes right they're they're depressed they have very little friends they're anti-social and these are just a couple of people that come in and and they'll tell me, they're like, man, magic is the one thing that is saving me right now. And I hate to say it, but for some people, it's saving them from doing something really bad. It's a game that takes you away from the real, you know, real world. And you can you can run your elves deck, you can run your uh, your Eldrazi deck, whatever you want. And, and that can be you for the next couple hours. And that's the best thing. That's, su that's super fun. Um, you get to just enjoy the game. You play with your cardboard. It's kind of an investment. You have cards that are worth money. People want those cards. You can trade. There's a whole market. There's a whole economy. It's really cool and it's expansive universe. But when it comes to cease and desisting, 
um, you know, websites that people use to make fun cards, to maybe make proxies, and then going in and removing the reserve list at an odd time and, and releasing these products that, that these products that are so tone deaf, like the Magic 30 stuff, whereas Brothers Wars as a set was an amazing set and people loved it, the negativity is ruining it. It's ruining it. A, a set that really should, even if you're not going to call it an amazing set, it's a good set. It's a, it's a cool set. The mechanics are great. Um, they're not broken. I think people are enjoying it quite a bit. But that's being overshadowed by the negativity surrounding the secret layers, the festival in a box, the uh, the fact that you know things are selling out by resellers that are going on to Facebook, and it's all this negativity. And, and you search it up, and it's the first thing you're going to see. You open YouTube every day, and what do you see? Oh, negative stuff, negative stuff, negative stuff, negative stuff about the game. You're not going to want to play the game anymore. It's ruining Magic: The Gathering. That's what it is. The solution is, in my opinion, just be better at communicating. Let people know that we hear your concerns and we're going to address them. If you don't address those concerns, this is something like, you know, that game, Ashes of Creation. Um, they heard a lot of the criticisms and instead of releasing the game, they essentially took two more years to develop it. And they gave up a lot of the money that they would have made. But they knew the game was going to die the moment they released it because it would have been so unpopular and unpolished and not great. You gotta get back into the mindset of we want the long-term value of the brand to sustain itself by, and, and also we want to release new products and, and things that people are enjoying, but we don't want product dump to be become, become a thing. We don't want wallet fatigue to become a thing because yes, you're gonna say, oh, you don't have to buy every set, but a lot of these people have been buying every set and when you tell them to stop buying every set, it, which is weird to do, first of all, you're a corporation and you should want everyone to buy every expansion of your game when you tell them that they shouldn't be buying it, they're just going to stop buying it. I'm going to be honest. Call of Duty fans buy every Call of Duty, and if they don't buy one Call of Duty, they're probably not going to come back. Okay? Don't push away the loyalty of your fans just so you can dump more product. I don't think that's a, that, 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 that doesn't compute or translate to a better future for your IP. So that's just my opinion, man. The negativity is hurting a lot of people that want to keep playing the game. A lot of the newer players that are getting into the game. A lot of the store owners that sell the game. And uh, it's it's kind of, I think, it's, it's going to hurt the community a bit. Because when people come into the store with the Magic 30 singles, I have a feeling there will be people they play against that are going to say, Did you open that pack? Did you buy that pack? I don't want to play with you. You, you, you supported one of the, you know, insert their opinion on the topic. You supported that. I don't want to play with you. It's going to be divisive. For something that should be a celebration of 30 years of the game, why in the world would that ever be divisive? It should be celebratory. Everyone should enjoy it. They should be happy seeing those singles. But it wasn't done in, in the proper way. And that's an issue. And I think people are, are, are voicing their concerns on deaf ears. And it's not going to work out in anyone's favor uh, in the space. No one. It might help other TCGs get new players. Alan from MysteryMTG.com. Thank you for listening. Sorry for the weird format, uh, but I'm just giving my opinion, and I want to know what your opinion is. Do you feel weird? Do you feel like you're, you're kind of being pushed away from magic? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.